And good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, everyone out LinkedIn land. This is Marion Spears Carr, and you're watching Healthcare Thought Leadership, my LinkedIn live show that I have almost every Friday. And today's uh, one uh, that's very personal and very special for me. Today's topic is flow, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's influence. Fligby, which you'll learn about in a moment, and Accomplishment Culture, which is the coaching model that I've been working on for a long time. I'm Aaron Spears Carr. I'm the managing director of Comar Partners, an executive search firm that works with healthcare and life science companies and a lot of other industries all across the country. If you're watching live, post in the comments. Let us know where you're watching. My guest today is someone who is, I consider a brother and a dear friend. His name's Jadon Zad uh, is his nickname, Boucher. He's the founder and CEO of Alia Simulations, which is an organ is a online learning, and I'll let him tell more about it, but they created a game called Fligby, which is a serious learning game based on flow theory and Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's work. And I met Zad as an introduction from Dr. C, as I call him, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And uh, we've been brothers ever since. Zad, welcome to the show. Say hello. Introduce yourself a little bit more. Glad to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. And it's a, it's a big pleasure for me being here and an honor. And Marion, first of all, just, you know, providing you a positive feedback. You pronounce the most difficult Hungarian word, Mihai, <laughs> wonderfully. So you are, you know, one of the tens of thousands in the English-speaking community who can actually pronounce this wonderful name, uh, a, pe a person's name, Chikson Mihai, who, who really was the creator of Flow. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really a, um, you know, happy and, and lucky person because uh, I had the, uh, the opportunity to work with Chikson Mihai for more than 10 years yeah. on this project. Uh, we will also uh, talk a little bit uh, about this later on. And meeting persons like you, Marian, so that, that's, I, I think, uh, the most important part of our work, that our network is growing. And, and actually, probably after 40 years or, or 45 years in your life, you will meet uh, with one of your brother you yeah. didn't know existing, you know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But, but that's what happened with us. So thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm absolutely happy being here today. Oh, so glad to have you. And Zad. And by the way, for those of you who are watching live, Zad is in Budapest, Hungary. Oh, yeah. um, but he has come to the States. We've spent time together. He and I have spent time together with uh, Dr. C, as I call him, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the creator of Flow. You know, so for those of you who, who know me, um, those are my people that are connected with me flow the flow experience and flow theory has been a big influence in my life both professionally and personally which we're going to get into it in a moment but um for those of you who don't know flow don't know the theory of flow uh, zed just give us a primer on what what is a flow experience and uh, i got some people checking in so if you're watching live let us know where you're watching from glad to have you in the audience yeah, zed, talk, yeah. tell us about flow you know, flow is not easy to understand, but I'm sure that everybody uh, had flow already in, in his or her life. So that's very important that flow is quite common. It doesn't happen, you know, often, but it's, it's, it's a common phenomenon. But what is flow? Actually, flow is when, when uh, you really get involved into some activities in a certain extent that, you know, the outside world will absolutely, you know, disappear around you and you are just focusing on the certain activity. So you will be, you will get one with, with that activity you are doing. That can be work, that can be sport, that can mm -hmm. be any type of activity. But the most important thing that you are really involved. So there is a huge concentration, a deep concentration. And why flow? Because, you know, that the certain activity you are doing will actually uh, work as a stream. You know, it, it will flow. You, you will just get in the stream and, and it will take you away from your reality because what will exist at that certain stage period of time is only the activity you will get one with that you will focus the outside world will disappear no sense of time so it's a very concentrated area and you know i just asked uh, uh, dr c as you called him chicks and mihai once that 
that that's the happiness we are talking about. And he said, no, 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 no. That's not happiness, but yeah. to be able to, you know, live a fulfilled life, a happy life, you have to be time by time or get into the flow state. So that's very important. So that's a physical state. Doesn't mean directly happiness, but to be able to be happy, you have to get into flow uh, time by time. Yeah. So, so, you know, for me, uh, I'll explain a little bit how I connected. Um, if you're watching a lot, please let us know in the comments. We're going to, we'll just give you a shout out in a moment. If you have questions about flow, but how this all connected, how you and I got connected, Zad, and, and we'll post some pictures up here in a moment uh, around this idea of of flow and 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 why it's so it's such an integral part of our, our lives. Really, is how we get connected with Doctor C. But from a learning perspective, one of the things that's really amazing for me about flow, and I, in a moment I'll tell you how I got connected to the concept. <clears throat> when we get in that flow state, from a leadership perspective too, that is when we are fully immersed in the work that we do and exactly. where we are really completely engaged. And frankly, what I found is that it also one of those, um, if you will, kind of um, – how to best describe it? A flow state is also where there is a sense of, of, of production that intrinsic motivation comes from it. We, there's a value of that. And one of the things we do in terms of leadership is we teach people how to help their team be in flow. And that's how you and I connected. I got it. I got it. Uh, one of the things I want to post up a picture right quick for us. Um, I want to share some pictures for us. Um, talk a little bit about uh the books here. This is um, Dr. C wrote um, tons and tons of books. He wrote a lot of books over the years and, and flow would really his life study. But these are two of the three books that I found the most influential one. Uh, I want to, I want you to talk about flow is good business in a moment, but Zed share a little bit on the screen about these two books and, and, and kind of what they mean to you and how you, you learn from them as well. Yeah, so actually I met first with the flow theory, just imagine, <laughs> uh, Marion, in, in, Dan, in, in Denmark. So oh, when okay. I, I was attending at, at the Lego Serious Play program, so that's a really interesting uh, concept. You know, people are using Lego bricks yep. to build up not models, you know, houses or, 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 or vehicles, but, but certain uh, corporate or, or or team conflicts or problem situations. So yeah. so that's an interesting approach. And and when they explained actually how is it working, they try to pronounce the name Chicks and Mihai, which you've done wonderfully, Marion. Yeah. <laughs> As a Hungarian, you know, I I I, I thought that uh, oh that's interesting. I never heard about that, but I know how to pronounce the name. So I yeah. you know is the hand tapping out the facilitator. So that was my first uh, meeting with this. And I was really impressed that at a company's headquarters like Lego, you know, the the flow is already a topic. So I yeah. went back home and, and, and I realized that the book Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience, was first published in the U.S. in 1990. Mm. So I, I made a short or, 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 or small desk research on, 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 on that topic and also on the person behind that. Yeah. And, and then also I, I bought the book. It was available in Hungarian quite early. I think uh, already that year it was uh, already published in Hungarian. And, yeah. and, and I found it a little bit hard to read, yeah. but really interesting. And, uh, and after that, The Creativity, which, uh, which is a fantastic book. So, so Flo, the original book, is, is not an easy read, but it provides yeah. a wonderful description about this theory. What does it mean? How actually flow happens you know for example how to get into the balance between your between your challenges and yeah. your skill set and and what's happening when uh, uh, when you try to you know build up the, uh, the 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 flow environment so how to you know behave like a flow promoting kind of person how to help others to get into flow so that that's the flow book the original yeah. one 
and the creativity is uh, is, is is also based uh, in, in in some sort of depth theory but that's a different type of book and and I found it even more interesting because you know when we are talking or, or thinking about creativity it seems to be very personal and yes. very unique phenomena you know creating something which never existed before but in this book Chicks and Mihai provides as far as I remember 10 very important basics yeah. to be able to be creative. And it seems to be that you can find the system even behind a very unique phenomena like creativity, scientifically, of course. And, and, and that's fantastic. So if you like uh, the systematic way of thinking on unique things, then creativity book is for you. It's easier to read, yeah. I guess, uh, for me <laughs> at least. Yeah. And 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 yeah, so so these are really really interesting readings. Yeah. Th so for those of you who are watching live, um, that co those are my copies of of the book. So the creativity book that one actually came from uh, Miyajik and Mihad's desk. Zad and I were with him uh, in in some in several of the meetings and times we got to spend with him, and. Um, that book was laying there and uh, Zad handed it to me and it's been a lifelong uh, since then has been a made child. Hey, uh, just a hey, cherished Marion, you, 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 You've seen the mess on, on, on Dr. C's table. So I, I, I yeah. think he never, never realized. He that never that missed it. Missed yeah. It. <laughs> we, so basically we stole it, right? Zad? We kind of stole it from him. <laughs> yeah, he knew, yeah. I think he knew we took it. It was fun. <laughs> it, it's got coffee stains in it and it, it's amazing. Let me Mary, give a shout out went to a good place. So yeah, great a great place and, and great. <laughs> let me shout out the people watching Mark Schnitzer, Dr. Mark Schnitzer is checking in uh, from Dallas, Texas, Laverne I, Hamilton checking in. She said, she's so excited to hear more about this topic. Been looking out for the flow moments in her own work oh. since the last episode yes. where I talked about it. So that's absolutely fantastic. Michelle DiStefano is checking in from San Antonio. Samana Jetty, my partner in the workplace wellness collective, Checking in from Alberta, Canada. Leslie Church is checking in from Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah, Dr. Right. Rao is checking in from Texas. Glad to have you, man. Insightful conversations. And we're just so glad to be here. So I got to tell people this story. It's, I told people that this was kind of a personal story. How I got involved with Flow is I was working on a leadership training program called Accomplishment Culture that is really around helping leaders understand the value of themselves, but also of the teams and the individuals within their teams. And I was really fully involved in trying to develop this coaching model. And I was having a conversation. I was studying the work of Elias Porter, who created relationship awareness theory. Um, he worked with Carl Rogers. He was a behavioral psychologist. And one day in, in just a random conversation around my life outside of work, I was sharing with someone about the idea of the extreme sports world that I, I grew up in and been in literally all my life, even at age 60, still participate. And, and their first comment, when you meet somebody who's been in the extreme sports world, and my, my two fo focuses were downhill mountain biking and skateboarding, downhill skateboarding, slalom skateboarding, et cetera. Their first assumption, Zad, was that I'm an adrenaline junkie, right? That I that that's you know the whole idea. And I said, no, I'm not really. I don't jump out of airplanes. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't do <laughs> that's things. That's good to know. <laughs> I don't do those kind of things. Um, I like sports uh, that are really in a controlled environment because it requires hyper focus, and I was addicted to hyper focus. So I'm gonna post a picture up here. Um, this is me skateboarding in Carlsbad, California in 2018 at a skateboard race, slalom skateboard race, an event out in Carlsbad. Um, Amazing. Slalom skateboarding requires perfect hyper focus to be successful because you're going very, very fast through the gates. Um, I, I was at U.S. Nationals uh, multiple times. I was uh, at the World Championships in 2007. And I said, this is what I'm focused on. I'm I, I'm addicted to hyper-focus. And they absolutely. said, well, that sounds like flow theory. Hey, right? hey man, you are in flow. Definitely. Yeah, based absolutely. On that flow. It, hey, it, you are yeah, in flow. Completely <laughs> fully engaged. And then they introduced me to the flow concept. I So I did the same thing as you did. I picked up the book. Um, I picked up that book. I uh, found it and started reading 
struggled with it uh, at first to understand it. But I made a connection between his work and where he was at University of Chicago and Elias Porter, who had created a relationship. They were both at the University of Chicago at the same time. And I sent Dr. C an email and said, hey, I'm working on this accomplishment culture idea. I see a connection between Porter's work and your work. Love to talk to you about it. Didn't think I'd hear from him. He emailed me back in 20 minutes. And I think you were sitting there or you were with him or I'd send him another email after that. And you were with him. It was your second email, but you know, my second email. That yeah. was so funny. So, so the, the, the professor. Go ahead, tell the story. It's amazing. He, he just mentioned, you know, hey, look at that guy. That's so. He, he's he's a little bit crazy, but but he knows something. So, so you should talk to each other. <laughs> that was how we started actually, and then I sent you an email, and uh, that's very on a long life friendship, I guess. So we, exactly. we just started there, exactly. and, and then then you came to California two or three yeah. times. Yeah. We visited Multiple Professor C yeah. there, and and we spent fantastic time together. And that's why, you know, I think if we are talking about Chicks and Mihai, it's very important to mention that he was not a typical type of of uh, scientist, you know, who think is 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 can only have a good conversation with other scientists. Yeah. But with persons like us from the let's say the normal life, from the business community, yeah. you know, from the sport community, and. And he was a kind of hub. So, so he just connected persons together. Yep. And, and, and that's the flow promoting idea. You know, yeah. how to get others into flow. And if you see us, you know, who, who, who watching this show today, then you see that, that we get into flow and we cannot get out, I think. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, we've got a couple of questions coming in. And I love that Samana, Samana's post it. A little bit crazy. <laughs> she thinks that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's funny. It. And he did say that. And uh, <laughs> so, it, but he was also had quite a sense of humor. And I want to the next picture I'm going to show you. For those of you who know, I, I love wearing Western cowboy hats. I've always, I've grown up wearing them, and I, I I tend to travel with a cowboy hat. One of the many visits that I had out where Zad and I were together, I obviously wore a hat. And and this is where the sense of humor comes into play. I look up and here he is. <laughs> me, I chicks me high, the world famous theory uh, developer of flow walking down the hall of his office, wearing my cowboy hat that I'd left on his desk and doing his best impression of John. Wayne. Hey, so, hey, Marion, just just, you know, it came into yeah. my mind during this this afternoon, we went to his home. He invited us. Exactly. And and ask, uh, do you want to have a vodka? You remember? Yeah, and exactly. Not, not vodka, but do you have whiskey? And just tell me what's happened after that. <laughs> yeah. So so he breaks out and I, and I do have the picture. He breaks out a bottle of Jim Beam bourbon and we're sitting there like having a bourbon in his home. Great, great experience. And then y'all, you guys had to go online uh, with the university of Australia. I think it was like some <laughs> university of Australia to talk about flow. It's just a crazy moment that we had, but um, so uh, checking in also is Christiana Kearns from California. Um, Samana had a question. I want to jump to this. I do want to talk about Fligby, the learning game, because my audience is leadership and I want them to understand the value of flow and learning around how flow can be engaged with um, people in, in their teams. But um, here's a really qu a question someone had. Can you talk a little bit about how to get into flow in the workplace? Cause burnout is such a, a big deal. What are some things sure, that sure. Dr. C has taught us about getting into flow in the workplace? And then we can jump into talking about fleeing being the game. Sure, sure. So first of all, burnout is really a big problem. And I think now, especially on the leadership development field, a lot of, uh, um, you know, focus is going on how to prevent that because it yeah. costs a lot of money and, and uh, it, it goes together with the mental health uh, issues uh, within the organization and within yeah. the company. So, so what, how, how actually flow comes into picture uh, regarding that. So if you are in flow, as Marion just mentioned, it cannot, you know, be all, you cannot be always in flow, but if sometimes it happens during your work, then your internal motivation will be definitely higher. 
and you will feel a kind of fulfillness and the kind of connectedness to the work and the cause of the organization. That's very important. Yeah. So flow cannot happen actually without a goal. And if it happens within your working environment, then it means more or less that uh, that you can connect yourself to the cause and the major strategic goals of the organization. So having flow within the organization, it not just means that your performance will be definitely higher. And we are talking about uh, performance add of, of two or three times more. So that's very important. So it's not just, you know, a little bit more. But yeah, it's dramatically talking, more. Absolutely. That's one thing. But the other thing is, and I think nowadays it's even more important that the mental health level will be definitely higher. So, so mentally your, your people will be stronger if they can get into flow. And what is the responsibility of the leader or the management? In this case, just providing you know, the right uh, environment to be able to get into flow. And the good business book of Chicks and Miha is, is more or less about that, how to create a flow promoting environment. It can happen. It's not easy. But uh, yeah. if you do how to do that, and if you are working on that, then it can happen. And that will definitely lower actually uh, the frustration and, uh, and, and the weakness from mental health point of view of your people. And great on point. And one of the things um, that I do with leaders uh, and leadership teams is when we think about that flow model, right? You can't be in flow all the time, but when we're not in flow, we're either in a state, typically a state of boredom or a state of anxiety. It's no, there's kind of no middle ground, right? We're and performance drops if we're bored or performance drops if we're in a state of anxiety. And, and, and what Chick and I really talked about was this idea of around we own a set of skills or, or, capabilities of my model to meet the challenge, which you, you, you said that in that key point, you have to have a goal, right? There's got to be an objective that's trying to be achieved. It's not just like chilling out. Like there's, there's some sure. value in, sure. in the goal that you're trying to achieve. And one of the questions I ask people is, well, tell me about a time when you were bored or when you were in a state of anxiety. And typically they start pointing to, situations where they were they didn't have command and control of the situation or they didn't own the skills or didn't have the resources or the skills or capabilities they owned were not being utilized to the fullest. So leaders, one of the lessons you can learn from that is continually assess the development of your team and your individual members and, and think about what are the skills that put them in a higher probability of flow? Does their job, does their role, does the work that they do engage those skills? And, and Dr. C and I talked about that quite a bit. Matter of fact, I'm going to post a picture here. This is uh, the picture you see or photos that I've taken over the years when we were with Dr. C. And yeah. um, that's Zach there. But this is one. Of this, memories. this one is a uh, from a video clip that Zad uh, actually took where Dr. C and I are talking about this very topic. This was the very topic around what happens to people in boredom? What happens to people in, a, in the state of anxiety? Um, so anyway, I wanted to put that picture up there. So, and, and Marion, the, the book was there on the table. Yeah, oh yeah wait a minute. You'll put it up. Yeah, it is right there. Right there's the copy <laughs> that we stole from his desk. <laughs> that we stole from his desk. That was the day that we stole it, too. Exactly. This was Jan And by the way, for those of you who are watching, this was January of 2020. It's the last time, unfortunately, after that was the yeah. pandemic was last chance we had to spend time with, with um, Dr. C in person yeah. uh, really in such a valuable meeting. Mm. But one of the, so one, I wanted to talk about it. Uh, people are loving the conversation uh, uh, in the chat. If you got questions, please post them up. We're going to run a little long today because uh, this is a topic I told you that's very personal for me. Sad. One of the things that you guys have done at Alias is is to take this business model uh, or learning situation with uh, from the Flow is Good Business book, and you created a learning game and um, a serious learning game called Fligby, and I'll put the link. Uh, in the chat and guys after the show if you're watching this live or watching it 
uh, on the replay. Let, let, let me offer Marion. So if somebody is interested in to try a real award-winning uh, simulation, uh, Flickby, then just send the email to Marion. And Marion, if you will share me later on, then we can send out, you know, full... Uh, full uh, gameplay opportunities to this. That's really an interesting game. And as Marian mentioned, we, we developed it uh, with Chicks and Mihai uh, about flow. Should, should I tell some, some more details about yeah, that? Yeah, tell that. And by the way, while we're talking about that, yeah, so if you're interested in playing the Fligby game, um, it is amazing. Um, and yeah, send me a DM, connect with me. We'll get you a link to play it. Sure. And, See, I love this comment, and, Do and Dr. Stencher says, I'm in. I want to um, – Dr. Dr. Ralph, um, Ralph, uh, game-based learning could be quite powerful. I wonder if flow-based leadership Absolutely. skills could be just tailored to managers and supervisors. Uh, I'll let you speak to that. And the answer uh, – short answer is absolutely. Um, but tell us about Fligby because I want I want the people, the audience uh, to learn. Yes, about so, so we approach Chicks and Mihai more or less on the same way like you mentioned, Marion. Send an email and and our major task was to, you know, help people understand flow and how it how it can be utilized as a power source within the business, with yeah. orga within organizations. And he told us, well, that's that's interesting. First of all, uh it, with the good business original researches, and he wrote a book about that in, in uh, 23, uh, actually he identified 29 major leadership capabilities or leadership skills, Correct. which yeah. you need to be able to create the flow promoting leadership. And, and Dr. C mentioned that if you create a learning tool around how to strengthen those skills, those 29 skills, that could work. Yeah. Okay, fine. So we already know a lot about, you know, serious gaming, which means that it should be fun and engaging. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the big headache was, okay, fine. But in, in, in what type of organization should the story take place where you will actually have to solve your managerial, you know, uh, uh, tasks? And, and, and Dr. C said, why not use a Californian vineyard, so Californian winery? Uh, and, and, and I just asked, okay, but how it came into your mind. And he said, well, you know, if you can really enjoy a glass of good wine, then you will be able to open toward flow. So that's the secret. Exactly. And, and yeah. we said, good. Okay, fine. Then let's put a story uh, into a Californian vineyard. So within Fligby, actually, your task is to manage seven of your team members as a head of uh, this uh, fictitious Californian vineyard, Californian winery. Yeah. And of course, it's not easy, but you are playing. That's an interactive movie. You are making your decisions. You will have fun. You will immerse in the story. But by the end of the day, and that's uh, what was created by Chicks and Mihai's research team in California at Claremont, Yep. We are able to provide a very deep analysis, let's say a report or, or a profile on these 29 leadership or, or people skills required to create the flow promoting environment. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, the, that's the super important behind, you know, the scenes. So you are playing, that's okay. You, you, that will be fun. You, you spend your time with uh, solving, you know, uh, managerial dilemmas. That's okay. But by the end of the day, we can provide you an analysis what skills you used more frequently, what are the skills you didn't you use mm -hmm. so frequently. So, and, and, and that provides a wonderful opportunity to create a personal development plan uh, based on your performance in the game. So that's a game-based learning, but uh, really about Chicks and Mihai's, you know, mastermind behind that. And of course about flow. I, when so when you and I met, um, we decided we were going to work together, and we're, we're and we're still working on that plan because the accomplishment culture coaching model really aligned with it. Absolutely. And um, so I when I had my first chance to play the game, I thought I was a flow expert. Like I was so <laughs> excited, I was going to destroy this game, no problem. It was very difficult. Like it was, but I learned so much about my leadership style. I learned so much about how to communicate and it's so it, and for those of you um, go to the Fleabee site, but it, it's basically an interactive movie where you're actually interacting as the role of 
the general manager of the winery and you just took over and yeah. um it is um in each chapter each scene you get some feedback along the way and there's a lot of um uh, a lot of information being provided to you throughout the process. And uh, one of the things that's so cool is there is a learning resource center where you can actually stop the, stop the game, right. And go over and learn about that particular context, that particular situation. So it's, it's highly interactive from an individual perspective, but it's fantastic when you do it as a team, it's, it's amazing as a team to see where everybody's coming from, and I love the idea that you suspend this reality. Uh, you know, you're not focused on healthcare or whatever. You're focused on the winery, but it's really about people, right? Uh, Zed? Yes, absolutely. And, and and that's where actually this blended learning uh, model is, is coming into the picture. So we realized that having a, a really good experience, you know, with an online and virtual reality that doesn't necessarily enough if you would yeah. like to build up these these skills and and that's pretty much the same like the uh, you know aviation industry faced with how yeah. to train the pilots so they yeah. they require some sort of experiential learning environment yeah. you know because it's it's not really appropriate to experience with living souls you know <laughs> how yeah, exactly. to deal with the plane if if, if you have a trouble with engine one. Yeah. So, so the, the major issue is that there is the simulation, but you need some sort of uh, instructor based aid as well. And, and that's pretty much the same like the pilots are doing. So uh, doing the simulation for the pilots is not enough. You need a kind of after action review yeah. and you need persons like Marion who are uh, qualified for actually uh, understanding the report and using the analytics to just not just to you know point on the on the issues uh, regarding your own personal development, but as you mentioned, uh, Marian, we can create uh, cohort reports and that can refer already to organizational issues, yeah. and that's very very important that. Uh, that you can also identify some problems which can occur, for example, when you are doing, uh, you know, for example, a, a digital transformation project yeah. uh, or, or, or you are just trying to manage the, the mental health issues within the company because you will be able to identify the, the, the struggling points and, 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 and the challenges inside the organization. So that's, that's a multi-level uh, or multi-purpose kind of tools. But to be able to use that and feedback it in the right way, you mm -hmm. need the, the human interaction. Exactly. Uh, and by the way, the photo that I just put up, put up for you guys, that's, uh, again, Dr. C. Mihai, sitting in his desk. I actually took this photo. Zad and I, Zad is actually standing uh, right around the desk or sitting on across the desk. This is where uh, Dr. C was looking at this analytics process and, and, and he's talking about how flow plays into that. And uh, I, lo I love this photo. It's one of my, one of my favorites uh, that I've taken. Uh, so in the audience, uh, in the uh, Michael Young, uh, love the efforts around this edutainment and, mm. it, and and it is edutainment for sure Absolutely. that combination of getting engaged from a entertainment perspective but learning that process mm. a lot of people are checking in mark dr sister says yes sign me up i want to try the wow. game uh, uh absolutely yeah. uh uh christiana out in california is like i can't wait to try this uh, and and samana is like we'll sell it share it with the workplace wellness collective so we got so many different angles here. And if you have, we're going to run a couple minutes long. We already have, but if you have any questions, if you have any final questions for Zad about Fligby, about flow, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, if you have time to, with just a couple minutes, kind of what the next phase of the work around flow, um, like the interactive movie stuff, is there anything oh, you can share yeah. with us kind of what the future of yeah. Fligby, yeah. Flow, all y'all simulations, some stuff that, you and I are working on? Yeah, thanks for asking this because I think uh, we just started this journey together, Marion, and, yeah, and I think this this next uh, phase is absolutely, uh, so or, or, or friendship will continue in, in that as well. Yeah. So what we real, okay, we were approached, uh, uh, I think that was already three years ago yep. by Hollywood's leading interactive movie company, which is actually a Paramount uh, company, Control Movie. 
and they have this wonderful uh, interactive movie technology developed for purely entertainment. And, and what they missed is actually, okay, fine. So I'm making decisions along the movie, but you, you are able really to create a profile based on the choices or, or, or the data stream created yeah. by my choices. And we started a conversation. First of all, you know, I thought that it's, uh, it's not really in line uh, with what we are doing. So probably you do not see it based on this conversation, but we yeah. are serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Persons of our profession. So, yeah. you know, we are professional. We just have too much fun today. <laughs> so, you know, we are working on, on a serious business of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, leadership development and, and talking about pure entertainment, that how it goes together. And, and then, you know, I just really, uh, you know, remember in some of our, our conversations, personal conversations with yeah. Dr. C. And, and he was really open toward any new ideas. So, yeah. so we gave a chance to that. And, and the big deal was that, uh, that there is a fantastic movie. That's the, that's the late, called Late Shift. That's oh, the late most shift, popular. Yeah. Late Shift is the most popular interactive movie nowadays produced by Paramount and the Control Movie. That's uh, not really similar to Fligby because yeah. it's a Hollywood movie, you know. Hollywood yeah. is very, very professional. How to tell a story, how to create the narrative, how to you know build up the characters. So they are really professional in that. And what we've done actually, we took the measurements, the analytics we created with Chicks and Mihai, and yeah. matched this with the uh, with the late shift movies. So now it's in in a trial phase. But if you are interested in, I can offer to you guys also an access to that, especially since Marion was one of the uh, experts who helped us to create the report uh, based on the uh, on the late shift gameplay that's a thriller okay so that's not about a binary not about yeah. people you will be in crime so that's a thriller that, that play yeah. it plays in london it's really exciting and we are able to measure not the 29 skills directly but five really important behavioral pattern, which shows that what are your favorite or preferred uh, uh, team roles. So yeah. this is the kind of role optimizer application. And I would be happy also to share this with you, especially since Marion is the expert in the report. So if you would like yeah. to see how it works in life, then also just, just uh, send the message to Marion and, and we will make it available for you. Absolutely. And the work that we were doing there and how it connects to my executive search work is those five characters of, of, of how you identify those leaders really fits with the work in, that we do when we try to match companies with the right leader. We, those are those kind of those five key areas of focus. Is this role really a blend of those or is it more one or the other? So if you want to learn about the late, late shift movie and that work, also send me a message. Zad, we, we just need to have another show because we already ran over. Let's have, have another show. If you liked uh, today's show, please like and share this, uh, the replay with your network. Please post in the comments your feedback uh, of our conversation with Zad. Flow is such an important part. I'm going to, uh, so I have to add this last picture. Um, this is the last photo I, I had the opportunity to take with, with Dr. C. I have multiple pictures of he and I standing on his front porch of his office in Claremont, California. This is my favorite one, though. You know, it was the mm. last one. He was laughing because he, he was giving me a hard time because I was dressed in blue and he was dressed in blue. And he, and, and he was just <laughs> laughing at me. He's like, you did that on purpose, which is not true. It just happened to be what I was wearing that day. Uh, Zad actually took this photo. We were getting ready to go to lunch. And, uh, and Marion, do not forget that, that the final page of your thesis was written by Professor C's, Dr. C's desk. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So I didn't have that photo. I have a photo of my laptop. When I was, I finished my master's degree much later, uh, in life and I actually completed it <laughs> at his desk and I have a photo <laughs> of my computer. I hit send to Liberty University from his desk when I finished that, that, that work on my thesis. So absolutely. I'd forgotten all about that. There's so many things there. Zad, thank you for being a part of today's show. Love thank you audience here. for being here. Please like and share, please post comments. If you like the show, what you learned,
if you're a healthcare leader and want to learn more about my work and how this attaches, how we use this as, as a framework, but also how to learn, how leaders learn, please send me a message. Zad, um, also, we'll put your contact information to contact Zad is one of my connections on LinkedIn. Please connect with him. And we'll, we'll, we'll close out for the day. Thank you. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Absolutely, man. Talk to you tomorrow. Have, See a, you wonderful later. Bye. Have yeah. a wonderful weekend. You too.